Check it out. Yes, it's the Corsair H110i GT. The I stands for intelligent because this works with Corsair Link. That's one of the main differences. No, it's not. There's a lot of differences. Cold plate is, is new and changed. Pump is improved. Sleeving on the cables. Do you guys see that? Sleeving. I thought when they said it had sleeves, they meant it was going to be covered in tattoos. But why would you tattoo it? Some tubing. Tubing that's tattooed? That's tubular, dude. There's also uh, a lot of other things. The radiator has been improved. What I'm going to focus on mainly in this review, overview thing that I'm doing, uh, is the performance, of course, because that is the most important thing when you're playing with water cooling. And then we're going to focus on uh, the customizability and control and uh, that sort of thing, because that's what that's what's new compared to the H110. So first off, let's go through the basic specs. Of course, this is a 280 millimeter unit with two uh, 120 millimeter 100. No, no, no. There's there are 140 millimeter fans, and uh, on this one, the, the model number is the uh, SP140L. Two of those decently quiet, capable of 2100 RPM, give or take 10%, and 113 cubic feet per minute. That's uh, crazier than you know what's on the H100i and also uh, the H80i. As far as the dimensions go, the radiator dimensions are 322 by 140 by 27 millimeters, and the fans are 140 uh, millimeters, of course, by 25. The advertised sound is 43 decibels. Now, on the actual pump unit itself here, it's actually a nice, sleek new design. They've gone with really sleek. Everything's thin, uh, new. Uh, very minimal and clean aesthetic and uh, they have full RGB lighting going on there's an LED in the Corsair logo uh, you guys will see that we're gonna be doing a bunch of build videos with these things so you stay tuned for all of those but uh, yeah, you'll see the LED lit up and you can change it make it do different things uh, uh, make it respond I mean there's a ton that you can do with the software so in in the uh, software um, it, it can monitor everything that's going on since it's Corsair link it can work with all the other Corsair components uh, and tell you the different temperatures in different parts of the case, uh, give you readouts from just about anything from your motherboard to your, your you know, CPU temperature. So it can be a great tool to, you know, monitor everything that's going on in your system. And some people are going to buy this just for that. Other people are going to buy this and install it and never use that because all they care about is the performance. So I guess we could go ahead and get down to that. You'll be seeing a lot of this on our channel. By the way, this was very easy to install, extremely easy to install on our Socket 2011 motherboard, 2011-3. Now. For the uh, test system, over there we've got the uh, 5960X 8-core from Intel, and that thing can use a lot of power, especially when overclocked, and that's what we want. We wanted to really push this thing because with the standard Haswell stuff, uh, it doesn't really doesn't really push it enough to show what's actually happening. I mean, this versus like the top, you know, um, just air cooling units on Haswell, you won't see too much of a difference. Another thing that's interesting about the software is you can go in there and you select um, several different profiles, like a quiet profile, performance profile, and that sort of thing. Uh, so you can pick whether you want the ultimate performance or if you want to, you know, somewhere, compromise and be somewhere in the middle with your performance. Uh, I mean, you can really overclock, still run at completely acceptable temperatures, and keep the fans low and be just fine. So let's go ahead and look at the performance now uh, with a, with just, you know the stock clocked 5960x. Uh, you guys can see the rest of it there. We've got some Dominator DDR4 on this test bench. We've got uh, uh, what else do we have on there? The EVGA uh, X99 classified, and you guys can go ahead and, over to the website and we have the entire list of all the specs for our test rig. So anyway, getting down to business with the temps. Uh, we test this with ADA64 using their stress test, and we let it run for about 15 minutes. And then we take the minimum, the maximum, and the average. And as you can see here, it did spike up to 45 degrees in the maximum, but the average was around 40.7. Uh, I usually like to focus more on the average, but the the maximum can be something to think about if you're getting close to your TJ Maxx. And right now, for me, on this CPU, as long as I'm under 89, I'm just fine. If once I get up to 89 and 90, I'm like, oh, that's not good. That's, that's going to catch on fire. So... 40 is completely lovely and uh, good enough for overclocking. All right, let's check out the overclock. And uh, as you can see there, it is still uh, quite a bit ahead compared to the uh, Corsair H105i, and that was a very performant CPU cooler. So this is uh, 7 or 8 degrees better uh, as far as the average go. And then, you know, the same there with the, the max. You can see it spiked up a little bit up, all the way up to um, 69 degrees. But still, uh, nothing to worry about. We do have more headroom. We could probably push this thing to 4.6, 4.7, 4.8. Uh, 
Uh, and this was running also at 1.3 volts, so that's not very conservative at all. We're just, you know, really uh, giving it hell. We've done a lot of tests lately with uh, different water cooling units, and this is one of the best. I also love how uh, slim this is. Of course, being 280 millimeters, it's going to limit the options as far as cases go, but most modern cases, especially for enthusiasts, do support that. It's going to allow you to overclock. Um, and if the software is something for you, then that's the way to go. If RGB is your thing, good way to go. Uh, the only thing uh, that I didn't love about it was the, the noise. Now, um, it got up to 66 decibels. Not terrible, but I thought it was going to be a little bit quieter than that. I'm sure you can get some more silent fans and put it on here. Also, we measured the temperatures right up on top of the thing. If you put this into a case and close it up, you're probably going to lose 10, 20 decibels. If you've got a silent case, it's probably going to be pretty nice. Um, but, you know, that's just the baseline as far as... Then that was with overclock, you know. So there's that. I also want to mention we did do some tests with some Arctic Silver and some, um, some Tunique. And at the stock clock, about the same. All the way across, about the same. But with the overclock, strangely enough, a couple degrees warmer with the the custom paste. Never had that happen before. Almost always we have better performance with the custom paste. So I guess just leave the paste on there, even though that breaks all my own rules. But leaving the paste on there, we reseeded a couple of times. Albert was in here testing. He even took it off and tried different amounts of, of the you know thermal paste, different amounts of the Arctic Silver. Put a little drop in the middle, trying you know, the pea method, trying the, the grain of rice method, then trying a little bit more paste. He tried a few times and scratched his head and said, I don't know, man, the, the thermal paste that already was on there worked better than the custom thermal paste. So just go with whatever comes on there. If it comes off, whatever, you're going to, I mean, it looks like for us, we got a couple of extra degrees, but not that big of a deal. Anyway, uh, I'm going to be doing some builds with this very soon. Stay tuned for those. Actually, uh, Pistol's going to be using one of these in her upcoming uh, gaming rig with some all, kind, all kinds of awesome stuff going in there. So, yeah. We'll, uh, we'll have that coming very soon. We also have a crazy video with tons of different cooling units. We're talking like, I don't know, 17 or 18 cooling units that we tested. We didn't sleep for a few days. Actually, Albert did most of the testing. He didn't sleep for a few days, but that's coming up soon as well. Uh, be sure to subscribe to this channel. This is our hardware channel. We're going to be putting all the videos like this. I keep picking this thing up. It's awesome to pick up this way. I'm just also doing a durability test. But yeah, be sure to... Um, be sure to subscribe to this channel because you don't want to miss anything on any of our channels. Least of least of all, not this channel. All right, we'll see you guys later. Comments go on the forum, and uh, all the tech support members are keeping us alive. Thank you very much. See you guys later. Um, yeah, itches my face. My nose itching from that cocaine. <laughs>